So the March challenges, the challenges that we have decided to do for the Amy Warden Soap Challenge back catalog revisit, the ones that we decided to do for March, uh, they have been wildly more enjoyable than any of the ones that we did for February and most of the ones that we did for January. I am very glad that we are nearing the end of all of this though, because it has actually been really tough on myself as well as the Soprentis and our sort of artistic minds and the way that we approach soap, having to be sort of confined to a technique when maybe we weren't feeling like doing this on a Tuesday and we wanted to do, you know, something else entirely. This particular pour though, I wasn't feeling that at all because it is a lovely pour. It was so much fun to do and I can't wait to tell you all about it, but I'm gonna have to wait because there's an intro and a thing and we don't stop doing the intro and the thing at all. So I have to say, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 358 of 365 days of soap. And today we are doing the Amy Warden Soap Challenge Challenge thing for the Kiss Pour, which is actually one of the more current challenges, which is awesome. We are, again, nearing the end of the catalog which I'm actually looking forward to. We, uh, in order to do this, we ended up spending effectively three months going through the entire back catalog, one day for me, one day for Georgia May, and uh, we have not been able to do the things that we really love doing, like our themed soaps, because we love themes so much, and we don't, we haven't been doing any of that. So this particular pour, the Kiss Pour, it is actually a really fun pour, it requires all the things that I love so very much. Very fluid batter, swirls, those two things. That, that's all you need to make me happy. The uh, scent that we are using from Maple Street is a dupe, I think, of Bath & Body Works. I think it's called Forever Midnight. It has a very interesting scent profile in the description, and it's lovely. It's very alluring. It's very sultry, for sure, out of bottle. And I'm interested to see how it soaps, but, you know, we should actually get to the soaping bit of it so you can see how it soaps, and I can just talk to you about whether or not I like the scent. So, you know, let's go there. Okay, so like first up, just across the board, I loved everything about this pour. Like what's not to love? It's all of my most favorite things ever. That is a very interesting dupe, the Forever Midnight. I think that was an old Bath and Body Works, like a legacy scent. And it's delightful. I, I really love that one a lot. I think it says things like it's plum and vanilla orchid and all kinds of stuff. Yes. Anyway, this pour is lots of thin batter and lots of beautiful swirls. And so of course I love it. Like those are my most favorite things ever. It's the ones that are, you know, lots of thick batter and layers that I never like, but that's not what this is. So I get to do the things that I absolutely love today and I'm super looking forward to that. Now the kaolin clay has been dispersed in the water, the sodium hydroxide has gone into the oils. I um, am using my swirls mix today actually and it's delightful. This, this is a newer one. This is a 60% liquid oils, 40% solid 
and the 60% liquid are olive, canola, rice bran, and apricot. Actually, all like in equal parts. So that's interesting. And the 40% solids are coconut and palm. I am back on a palm kick, and it is what it is. So yes, there's that. And the idea of this pour is you have two different containers of colors that you can swirl in various ways. You can do like the clamshell pour and like just fill them up equally, like one color on each side for two different, you know, containers. Or you can do a thin lines pour or a column pour, like a faux funnel pour, which I think is the the method that we are doing for ours. Um, I think George May and I are both doing that same method. So pretty sure if memory serves, I'm almost positive this is what I'm doing. And so in one section, there will be a group of colors. And in the other section, there will be another group of colors. And then you take them and you pour them into the mold at the same time. And that creates this really beautiful kind of wave type thing and I'm racking my brain now trying to figure out who the teacher was for this one I want to say it was tree Marie soapworks but honestly I don't know I do not remember I feel like she's done a lot of tutorials um, given how kind of like recently like new ish she is to the whole scene if she because I think that she did another one too right I I don't know and I can't look it up right now because my phone is dead and I'm actually using the computer so because I'm talking to you yeah so there's that but it's a very lovely pour and if it's not tree Marie this is something that tree Marie would totally do so this is like totally up her alley so I guess this is why I I see this as I think that's what that's who did it I have no idea anyway I have four equal parts of the pink the green the blue and the black and then double that amount in the white because the white's going to go into both sections I think no I've forgotten yes the white goes into both sections and so on one section I'm going to have the black the green and the white on the other section, I'm going to have the blue, the pink, and the white. Pretty sure that's what I decided to do. And, uh, I mean, I guess we'll find out in the pour, because I'm mixing in my, my scent and separating that between all of the different colors and everything right now, which means we are actually ready to do, to do the pour thing. And it's such a fun pour. And it's also in a slab, which I, I don't know, I... I never realized how much I loved slabs. I, I don't think that I actually do love slabs, but I am in a slab, have been a, in a slab mood for like the entirety of 2021 so far. So also yay that it's a slab because again, I, I like slabs. And uh, yeah, this is actually all mixed up beautifully. The batter is still reasonably fluid. I don't see any really big problems yet with the scent potentially accelerating but you know we'll we'll see in just a second when i start pouring now the reason you want a very fluid batter for all of this is because it actually does take a fair amount of time to get these colors both poured into or all poured into their respective containers and again we are doing a faux funnel along the side of the long nose container and alternating the colors as I go over and over and over again and then I still have to do the other thing that same thing with the other uh, with the other container and so that in and of itself can take a while and so for that reason you want everything to be very fluid and so you know I mean whenever you're doing a soap challenge or anything that requires any sort of you know time whatever 
the best rule of thumb that's always given is work with an oil, with a fragrance oil that you know doesn't accelerate. But since we decided to, you know, up all of the soap challenges to nightmare mode with everything and do not only the challenges themselves but also um, testing fragrances we're not a we don't have the benefit of just working with a, a fragrance that that we know won't accelerate so we're making it extra fun and crazy and I actually really like that so I'm completely I'm completely fine with that it's a it's nice to, to flex your muscle and see if you are a good soaper just to be a, just because you're a good soaper or if you are only as good as the stuff that's in front of you because there is kind of a difference it can be both you know like if you have an amazing recipe um, in front of you but don't know how to modify it well then that's all well and good until you need to modify it because you ran out of something and you don't know how because you don't actually understand the fatty acid profiles and the same is true also of like you know making soap for the challenges or whatever if you picked up you know Brambleberry's big swirls mix or whatever it is that they do or used the recipe that was you know whatever with the the tutorial then you are stuck having to only use like anytime you wanted to make a soap that looked like this you would only be able to use that blend in that way with maybe those exact colors and scents and so you know point is I, I like playing with the scent blends to really flex my, uh, my my soaping skills so we're going to pour it right there in the middle and try to pour it and yeah, my batter did get kind of thickish, but I think it's going to be fine. And I got ricing going on on both sides, actually, just a little bit. So, uh, actually, it's not ricing. We got some acceleration. Muff or some separation. Wow. Words and things. So, yeah, right there in the middle, you want to pour them kind of at the same rate and try to keep them in the middle as much as possible and allow them to sort of flow into each other and do their thing. And this was so much fun this was so satisfying just doing this and I'm not an an, an omni an ambi pourer guys and this was still fun for me but yeah we get further and further down and there's just more and more separation going on there so that hasn't happened with the swirls batch at all with the swirls blend at all so I'm going to say probably the scent but we will, you know, we'll see Georgia Mays tomorrow and see if she had the same issues. And then, you know, maybe it's it's not that at all. And maybe I'm just bush league and terrible. But regardless, super doesn't matter because this uh this pour, so pretty. So so pretty. Don't fall. Yeah, so we're gonna put this in the oven for C pop and gel, and then we will cut into it and see what it looks like in the inside. Don't fall. Don't fall. You know, tomorrow, after I block that up so it doesn't fall. Okay, and on to the cut. And you don't have to do it this way. I doubled it up in half of the size of the slab mold. So, it's, so I can cut it into six chunks and then split it in the middle to reveal the pattern that happens inside. You don't have to do this this way if memory serves, but this is how I wanted to do it. So there's there's that. And uh, the, the only thing that I would say if you're gonna be doing that is obviously make sure that your, your block is, that you're, if you're going to split your slab in half or any mold to that, that the thing that you're splitting it in half with is well supported so it doesn't do the I'm gonna fall thing. Yes. <laughs> And, you know, I, I didn't do that. Thought it was sturdy enough, and it appears it's not at all. I'm actually going to be doing, in the next couple days, speaking of dividers and all of the things, I'm actually doing a soap that has nine freaking dividers in it. 
and the reason why I wanted to do this soap is actually because someone on the channel had talked about oh that's so pretty someone had talked about in the comments using old political signs to make dividers and I'm like that's actually kind of an awesome idea like because what the hell do I do with political signs when they're done right and so I decided that I was going to use my political signs to make dividers for this pour and so they're they stick in there really thick and really really sturdy is the point that I was making so then you don't actually need to block them up if you're using political signs as dividers instead of well, I mean literally what I had made that last one with was freaking uh, the piece of a roll it's not called a roll a 25 y yard worth of fabric you know the thing that it's on the roll damn it what is it called I work with so much fabric you think I'd know these things that's super cute I love that that's very fascinating it's definitely like in fitting with the uh, the actual scent blend you know called forever midnight or whatever I wanted it to be a little bit you know dark and kind of mysterious or whatever with the color selection and I think to that that totally works absolutely um, the separation made this a little bit more grainier than I think I would have otherwise liked but that's not a big deal textures fun in soaps too so no big deal nobody but me knows that it um, wasn't quite meant to be that way on the inside that that wasn't what I had originally you know intended but you know now you know because I said things on the interwebs but you know that's that's fine too because it's all good and uh, you know those are actually really cute soaps for sure I this pour is definitely something that I do want to do again with a slower moving uh, fragrance or just in general just playing with the color palette because this can be turned into any number of cool things for themes for sure and that's kind of becoming the theme of March that the Mar the challenges that we've done for the Amy Warden soap challenge thing the revisit they can they can be added to your line rather easily they're not horrible pains in the butts to make so you can make a bunch of these and they can just be you know like these are easy to make it doesn't take a ton of time I mean this video in and of itself it's it's not super long some of the some of the February challenges were so long that is so cool that's like weirdly the only set in all of them that actually had some green in it though I think isn't that weird like where did the green go it's just is it's gone but whatever this pour was so much fun to make and also oh, there's a little bit of green in that there really hasn't been much of that big bright green that I put in there though that's kind of wild they're mostly just variations of that so I find that interesting but yeah no that's a that's that's weird that all came from the exact same exact same soap exact same pour that's that's pretty cool this is this is definitely a fun one I'll definitely do it again the forever midnight scent by the way it's very very it's very lovely it smelled good after after saponification that is day 358 my kiss pour so yeah, all in all, that pour, very, very fun and very, very easy too. And it creates a bunch of beautiful soaps, all of them different from each other. You got some cool soap Rorschach when you open them up. You can have a cool like story between the two bars that you did open up. A lot of cool, cool things. And depending on what color palette you, you select for it, the, the possibilities are literally endless. This is something that I would actually put in my line and do fairly frequently for sure just because of the beautiful variation that exists and how reasonably easy and not time consuming it is to do it yes so if you are interested in this soap you can find it on the website tomorrow after georgia may does her thing the forever midnight scent it soaked reasonably well we had some acceleration problems going on but nothing that i would you know put a big like mark against for i don't think but i will like reserve my final judgment until i see the soap prentice's soap and then, you know, there's that. If you're interested in more soapy antics and seeing, you know, what we get up to for the remainder of this year and what we're doing for year two, are we doing 365 more days daily content for year two? I think you guys have all figured out at this point that we're definitely doing a year two, but what does that look like? Subscribe to the channel and then you'll find out. For those of you who are subscribed to the channel, hey, 
thank you so much for being subscribed to the channel. You are the reason that we are here on this day, almost at the end of the first year of daily freaking content, which is crazy. But crazy actually is in fact my middle name. I know that we haven't talked about that or even talked about my first name, but yeah, crazy. That's my, my middle name. It's not. Yeah, I appreciate you being subscribed and being my Sudzers is the point. Thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I am out of here for today. I will see you guys all again tomorrow. Bye.